you know, the, the combination is new with those specific drugs. The foundation of the combination isn't new for any of us, so I think we know how to manage that. But it is more difficult when you're coming at a newly diagnosed patient to talk about two different methodologies of administering a medication versus you're just coming in. It's easy to say you're just coming in for your infusion or you're just taking oral medications at home. When we're talking about the combination, we do have to spend extra time going through the reasoning behind this combination, I think, which, which we're used to doing with other com IOTKI combinations as well, but trying to make sure that the patient understands that these are both very active drugs and also helping them understand that the timeline of when the side effects might occur for each could be different. So it, it is equipping your patient on the expected side effects and the possible expected timeline of when we expect to see these come in. Um, but I think we're, we're lucky enough to all be subspecialized so that we can focus on this and be able to present this to our patients. I know that the struggle for this might be more in the general oncology setting too, where they're not quite as used to this combination, but I, I'm sure that, and I'll, I'll pass it to Laura to see what takes she has on, on explaining this to patients as well. Yeah, well, I think you've covered it well, Megan. Um, and I think the key is helping patients understand why we're giving drugs in combination and that drugs such as nivolumab and the other checkpoint inhibitors they're large molecules, so they have to be given intravenously. Whereas oral drugs such as cabozantinib, we may be giving the combination of nivolumab and cabozantinib, but cabozantinib is a small molecule and therefore comes in an oral or a pill formation. And so helping patients understand exactly how to take the oral medication, and we will focus on giving the IV infusions when they're in clinic with us. Yeah, Virginia, anything else to add? I also think it's important patients understand that there are some overlapping toxicities there. And so we want to educate them particularly about those, but also that it might be challenging even for us as clinicians to be able to say exactly what is causing the side effect. So sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error withholding the TKI and seeing if that improves the patient or not. 